Victor. He's come back. Victor? Your brother? First word we've had from him in all these years. Oh, stars! Isn't it thrilling? Mm. Have you seen him? No, he telephoned me at the house at 4 o'clock. He just got in from Europe. And, oh, he wanted to know if father... Is your father still angry with him? Well, I'm not sure. You know, Victor ran away from Oxford when Dad married Julie. He was so furious, he said he'd never come home with anyone here in Mother's place. So we haven't heard from him since, and, until he telephoned today. And he never even saw your father's wife? No. Has he told your father he's back? Oh, I couldn't reach him, but I left word for him to phone me. Now, will you please hurry and get dressed? What for? Oh, I want you to look your grandest tonight at dinner with Victor. Well, I haven't a thing to put on tonight. Oh, you poor darling. Well, we'll pick up a couple of models for Julie. Are you sure you don't mind going there? No, darn it. I've tried everybody else, and, well, Julie's shop is still the smartest thing in town. Go right up to Mrs. Sloan's quick place. It's one of our advanced models. Oh, Very lovely. Nice. Right. Are you sure, Sam? I ain't seen your father. Oh, all Sloan. right, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Black, did my father telephone no, here? No, Miss Doris. How do you do, Miss Black? Oh, I got some great news for him, Blackie. And we want two dinner gowns, quick. Yes, the smartest you have for tonight. Mm, it's mighty important. So show us some speed. But if you could wait a little, I know Madame Julie would like to select something for yourself. Well, I've been selecting my own gowns for years. Oh, yes, of course. Well, if you'll just go in the sitting room, I'll have some models sent right in. Evelyn. Isn't that Doris Whitcomb? Yes, and the row she raised when her father married Madame Julie. I'll let you know if your father telephones possibly went down to meet the boat. Yes, thank you. Every time Julie comes back, I get hot all over again. While she's away, I can almost forget she's married to father. Well, at least you have a vacation twice a year when she's in Paris. Oh. I can't understand Whitcomb with all his money letting Julie run this shop. My dear, Julie was a Paris mannequin. And of course, everyone thought she was marrying Whitcomb for his money. This shop is her answer. It makes her absolutely independent of him. Oh, madame is here? Uh, yes, and she's coming right up. Thank you. What's the matter, Doris? Oh, I don't want Julie at dinner tonight. But she's been abroad a whole month. Well, she can at least give us a chance to see Victor without... Well, I can't talk about it now, Helen. I I've got to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> go, that's cute. For you, little girl. She can play with it when she's in the bathtub. Oh, thank you, thank and you. And you know, it swims on the water, too. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> oh, yes. Welcome home, Madame Julie. Mrs. Black. Madame Julie. Oh, I'm glad to see so you. Nice Comment ça va, ça va bien? Oh, very, very well. And you? Oh, I'm all right. But those costumes, they are terrible. Oh. They must see everything, even what I'm wearing underneath. But thank goodness this time the inspector is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Tiens, bonjour, Pauline. Ça va bien? Bien, madame. Bon. Doris, how nice of you to come to see me. And Miss Weston, glad to see you. How is your papa? Oh, he's fine, thank you. Ah, I do not see him at the pier, but I can't believe not to bother. Father's <laughs> on his way here now. No, really? Mm -hmm. Everybody go home. No more work today. Go home, girl. Oh, hey, oh, Madame, before they all go, Miss Doris and Miss Helen want some gowns for tonight. Gowns for tonight? Something especially enticing. Huh? Enticing. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I've got mine. Well, I will take care of that. Some things, Ty, see. Let me see. I suppose you'll have so much to attend to here. You won't be able to get home to dinner tonight. Of course, I think to do here, but I... You see, I have some special plans for tonight. I understand. How about this one? Go there. Turn around. <laughs> oh, no, no, 
That would not do at all. It goes wrong with your personality. I knew something was wrong with it. Tell me, for what do you want that gown? I want to look very pretty. It's going to be very hard for you to do. Well, really, I... Well, I, I want Helen to meet somebody tonight, and I want that somebody to like her. A man! Of course. Now I understand. Oh, but I don't want to look like a, a temptress or something. <laughs> oh, no. Let me see. I have just the thing. Oh, it will be adorable on you. Oh, thank you. And you know, that gown is supposed to do, uh, well, uh, <laughs> just that to a man. Just what? Just that. And don't forget, perfume. It is very important. Orchid. You shall see. Isn't she marvelous? I think she's vulgar. Oh, uh, Doris, have you any orchid perfume at home? Yes. Donut. Oh, I'll go and change. Well, I'll, I'll wait for you oh, out here. Right. Oh, Doris. Oh, hello, Daddy. Isn't it wonderful? Come over here. Now, tell me all about it. Well, he asked for you first. And then he recognized my voice and said, Is this my little sister, Doris? Oh, I can't tell you how I felt. I can scarcely believe it. Victor, come home at last. You will see him. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I've arranged a little dinner. Oh, just the Westerns. Oh. Wouldn't it be better to, to meet him alone? I thought it would be easier for you if there were others. Perhaps you're right. You sure he wants to see me? Oh, darling, the first thing he asked was if you would want to see him. Possible boy running away just because I decided to marry again? Oh, now, Daddy, in a way there was an excuse for Victor. Well, he was so devoted to Mother, but they were inseparable. Naturally, the thought of anyone else. Oh, but he must love you or he wouldn't come back. Uh -huh. Oh, Mr. Victor. I'm just thrilled, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll wait for Julie. Well, she's here. Here? In her office. Oh. Dinner's at 7.30. I'll be on time. Lucky, you have no idea what they wear in this season. <laughs> They're wearing muffs and sleeves and long gloves. Just like my great-grandmother. <laughs> Julie. John, how nice of you to come here. Oh, I brought you the most beautiful covers from Charvet, just the kind you like. Oh, thank you, dear, for thinking of me. Well, I got your cable telling me not to meet you at the pier. I know you are so busy. I, I don't like to disturb you. Oh, I went to the boat anyway. But when I got to your cabin, you'd already left. I'm sorry, I... I miss you. By the way, the steward told me to give you this cigarette case. You left it in your cabin. But... This is not mine. It's a man's case. Yes, I see it is. He picked it up while I was there, as a matter of fact. <laughs> That's probably why he felt obliged to mention it. Oh, those two are stupid, John. And I don't think it's very good, huh? No. No. No was to try to return it. Oh, no. 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 Of course. I suppose it's useless my asking you again to give up all this. All this? What do you mean? This running around. Paris and back. London and back. Oh. <laughs> and what should I do if I give up my business? Hmm? Well, you have a home. No, but I need my business to keep my peace of mind, John. Can't I give you enough to make you happy? But, dear, with this I don't need your money. And the people who knew your first wife and do not like me as Mrs. Whitcomb, they find me very important as Madame Julie. Uh, well, let's hurry home. We're going home to dinner. Something... Something 
Most surprising has happened. No, John. Doris has her plan. I don't want to intrude. Nonsense. I know all about the plan. Do you? Yes, I do. My son, Victor, is coming home tonight. Victor? Yes, Victor. So you see, it's most important that you should be there. Oh, no. No, I... I think Doris is right. I always felt so sorry for your boy. How anyone could hate me as much as he does without ever seeing me. Oh, nonsense. He doesn't hate you. He can't when he knows you. Oh, come, dear. I'm worried myself about meeting him after all these years. And I want you to be there so... So he'll understand from the first your position in the household. You'll come. Well, if you wish. That's right. Come along. No, I must stay here for a few minutes with Mrs. Black. I have some business to talk with her. Oh. But I won't be long. You'll hurry home soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, John. Your promise. A bad promise is better broken than kept. But you promised that you wouldn't try to see me again. But I didn't try. It was no effort. Oh, oh Julie. <laughs> you see, my taxi happened to follow yours from the pier. And then, after I'd registered at my hotel, I, I took a walk, and strangely enough, my feet bore me exactly in this direction. Oh, Julie. You see, I've been walking all around the streets. A stranger in a strange land. Oh, it, it's good to find an old friend. An old friend? Uh-huh. 24 hours, that can be a very long time. Mm. Funny, huh? How little we, we know of each other. <laughs> I know all I need to know of you. And besides... What difference does it make who we are? Oh, a great deal. For all you know, maybe I'll not be free to listen to you. Yes, I'd even thought of that. But there's always a way to free oneself when a thing is right. I learned that in the African jungles where they know nothing about our so-called civilized mm. customs. No, no. But there is one custom. 
You must have guessed. I am married. And you don't love your husband? Oh, I know, Julie. Your first kiss last night told me that. You can't go on living with a man you don't love. Julie, oh, but I... Nothing can keep us apart. No. Oh. Yes? You are very careless where you leave your cigarette case. Oh, oh gee, I, I thought I'd lost it. I thought I lost you. Never, Julie. No, Never. No, no, Paul, no. Please. Go. Go. Yeah, but... But, Julie. No. Oh, Julie. No, Paul. I shall see you again. When? Julie. Oh, go. I'll see you again. Sorry about this extra place, sir, but Miss Doris distinctly said there would be seven to dinner. And Mr. Whitcomb, when he arrived, made it very clear there'd be eight. And I suppose when Mrs. Whitcomb gets here, there'll be other orders. Mrs. Whitcomb arrived ten minutes ago and has gone to her room. One never knows what to expect in this house. Now listen here. When you've been here a little while longer, you'll understand it's your business to, 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 to mind your own business and not discuss family affairs. Yes, sir. Mr. Whitcomb has changed a good deal since he married his second wife. It don't surprise me at all. It takes a woman to do a bit of changing to any man. How many times have I told you not to discuss family matters? Depend upon me to let you know as soon as he arrives. Thanks. No, no. Oh, he's sure to be here soon. Joy, hmm? like it? We'll turn around. Hmm, sweet. I hope he thinks so. Can you smell the orchid perfume? Well, faintly. Well, naturally, I don't want to asphyxiate him. I wonder what he looks like. Well, everybody used to say that he looks like, like Mother. Oh! Now, what's the matter? Well, what if he's married already? Well, then he's married, that's all. Oh, oh Helen, it isn't you. It's Julie. She got around Father some way. The idea of her being here tonight of all night. Madame de Bray reposé an instant. Oh, je n'ai pas le temps. Donne-moi mes chaussures, Jeannette, dépêche-toi. Oui, madame. Pauvre madame. Quel souci. Quel tracas. Every time I want the house to myself, she has to come sniffing around. Well, Victor will show her that she can... Uh. Not here, hmm? Oh, don't frown, precious. Oh, I'm as nervous as... I never realized how much I wanted my boy. It's wonderful to know he's coming back. Oh, yes. I, uh... I think I'll... I'll wait for him in the library. Hmm? Why? Well, under the circumstances, it's proper that he should come to me. Daddy, you do love being a father. Oh. There. Oh, that must be Victor. Don't forget. 
send him to me in the library. I will, Daddy. Oh, it's only mother and father. Hello, dear. I told you we were too early, Frederick. Uh, when's your father? We're here, waiting in solitary dignity. Oh. Then suppose we clear out and wait till Victor arrives. Quite right. Hurry. Yes, but my dear, I... Please, Frederick, wait outside. Of course, dear. Just as you say. Just as you say. Come, dear, come. Oh, On the terrace, dear. Well, where did you get that awful frock? Oh, my mother, I... It's atrocious. I'll talk to you about that later. But mother... Outside, dear. Please do as mother asks you. Is she here? Oh, when I think of the times your mother in this very room and Victor was just a little boy. <laughs> Life is like that. That's probably Victor now. Uh, well... I'll go. I wanted to be in there when Victor came. Yes, and your mother didn't want it, and that's why you're here. Well, Barton, old fellow, here we are, safe and sound. How do you do, sir? Oh, I'm so happy that you're home again. <laughs> yes, but you don't look, don't look a day older. Well, how do you manage? But uh, how you've changed, Master Victor. Why, I would hardly have known you, Father. Master Victor, eh? <laughs> well, that makes me feel like a little boy again. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir, but Miss Doris is so anxious to oh, see you. Yeah, wh where is she? Doris. Oh, Victor. Oh, darling. What? Oh, well, what's the matter with me? But you're all grown up. Well, what did you expect? Oh. And I think I used to call you waddles. Waddles? Mm. When you were a little fellow, you used to walk with just a tiny waddle. Oh. <laughs> oh, Victor. You never even wrote one word to say you were alive or anything. Yes, I know, I know. But I'm here now, anyway. Huh? And you'll never go away again? Mm -hmm. How's Father? Happy as a kitten. Uh -huh. He's so thrilled at your being here. But you know, he can't resist being a stern parent. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. Waiting for you in the library now. Oh, and is his wife with him? She's in a room. Mother's room. Oh, I hoped she wouldn't be here tonight, but Father wanted her and... Well, after well, all, Doris, it was Father's right to marry again. We had no right to dictate. Why shouldn't you be here? You changed like that? Well, I've learned a little about the world since I've been away. We must try to understand their side of it, too. Well, we're not children any longer. Well... Uh, the Westons are here, Victor. I'll tell them that you've arrived. You'd better go on in and see Father. Mm. Well, come with me. No, no, I think you'd better see him alone first. Then I'll come. Hello, Dad. Well, uh, I... <laughs> oh, well. Well, I... I guess I'm still pretty old-fashioned about being a father. Uh, it's been pretty long, hasn't it? Huh? Oh, we'll make up for that now. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're, you're looking fine, Dad. Oh. Yeah, how do you do it? How do you keep fit? Well, well, we have to keep up with you young fellows, you know. I <laughs> know. Uh, uh, well, I think they've been alone just long enough. Come, Frederick. Oh, but really, I Go on in. Yes, but my dear, Go don't right in, Frederick. Go on. Helen, come. Come, dear, come. Come quickly, come. Well, well, well. So the prodigals oh. returned, eh? Hello, Victor, glad to see you back. Victor! Hello, Mrs. Weston. You still have your dear mother's eyes. Helen, Helen, come. Come, dear, quickly, come. You remember little Helen? Well, for... I feel as if I'd been away a century. Oh. Do I look a hundred years old? <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Tell me, can you still turn a cartwheel? I certainly can. Helen? 
Well, I can. Oh, I'll bet. Mother and girl. <laughs> well, Daddy, here we are. Yes, yes, here we are. Mm -hmm. At last. <laughs> They don't make very good playmates. We didn't oh. bring them, many of them back with us, though. Oh, did you? We had one little monkey. Yes, oh. Yes, he kept it. Yes. Yes. But I don't think did I should care for Africa. Yes, you should, sir. It's, it's, it's just kind of an old... I wonder where Julie is. I'll see if I can find her. John. John. Darling, what is it? I'm afraid to meet him. Afraid of what? Oh, darling, you look... You look beautiful. Come. Glad that no baboons were brought back. Very bad household pet. Well, I want to fight a monkey. A monkey, eh? Yeah, I want a jubilee. Oh, how would you like to ask me? Come on. Oh, Victor. Yes? Victor, come here. And this is you, Lee. My wife and my son. He's looking daggers at her. Mm -hmm. She's a businesswoman, Victor. What do you think of that? Trips abroad, London, Paris, and all that sort of thing. Oh, please, don't make fun of me. No, <laughs> I'm not. It's the modern spirit. She returned from Paris only today on the Ile de France. If I'd known, And what boat did I'd... you come back on, Victor? I'll bet she was flying the English flag. Did you arrive today? Yes. On the Baltic. What a coincidence. One boat brings my wife, and the other, my son. Where you stay. I'll send it once to your hotel for your luggage. Oh, no, don't bother that, please. You see, I think I'd better stay at the hotel until my... Plans are fully settled. Plans? Yes. I may leave at once on another expedition into Yucatan. Nonsense! You've no plans except to take your place in your home where you belong. Here, come. Write a note on your car. No, Dad, please. That Must won't. I spank you? Hmm? He will, too. <laughs> your father would be happy to have you here. Oh, bless you. Now, how can you refuse? Where are your cards? All right. Another expedition, hmm? We'll soon put a stop to that. Don't you think uh, it's better to tell... Barton? Yes, dear. Just as soon as he's written the car. So, uh, you're thinking of uh, running away again? You've done enough globe-trotting, young man. Yes, indeed. There you are, sir. Thanks. I'll send it once. Barton? Oh, Victor? Yes? May I have one of your cigarettes, please? <laughs> Why, Helen, don't tell me you smoke, too. Well, who doesn't? If you don't mind, please don't smoke. I have a terrible headache. I wouldn't have come down to dinner if I'd had a headache. Well, uh, after all, Doris, we can do without a cigarette. Why, of course we can. Paul Niles. Paul Niles. Hey, what's this nonsense about this name, Paul Niles? Well, that, you see, 
When I joined the expedition, I didn't have much money. It was your own fault. Well, perhaps. But I took the name of Paul Niles, and I've used it ever since. Well, from now on, Paul Niles is in the discard. Yeah, but... Oh, but, Mr. why the name Paul Send Niles? the car down. Well, I don't know. Oh, Jerry can pay the bill, whatever it is. Oh, no, just a minute, Dad. I can do that. Besides being my son, please remember, you're also my guest. Here we go, everybody. Oh. Oh. Come here. Oh, Mother. I suppose you don't recognize this young man. Oh, oh great Scott. Buddy. Victor. <laughs> well, you were, you were just sprouting when I left. Oh, I wasn't so little. <laughs> no, well, you never were little this way. Yeah, he's oh. going through college now. Oh, yes? Yes. Um, taking a football course. <laughs> <laughs> There's dinner at last. Victor, you take Julie. Honey, I'm going to see you alone. Oh, please. Be careful. Buddy, it's going to be just impossible around here from now on. Well, I always said the thing to do is to marry me. You'd better before our license runs out. Oh, beautiful. Papa, does this orchid perfume do things to you? Do things? Yes. Man, you said it would. What are you talking about? I hope Victor likes it. Oh, so that's it, baby. In love already, huh? I suspect Father. it. Father. <laughs> Stop. I'm going to sound just like a scheming mother. But wouldn't they make a charming pair? Hmm? Oh, I meant Victor in heaven. Oh. Hmm. Perhaps. Oh, Victor. Yes? This quail came down by airplane from our Canadian camp. Oh, really? Remember the camp? Yes. That, that's why I did my first exploring. It's a whole cooked dinner you're getting, my boy. Rather tasty after eating elephant's hide, eh? Oh! Do they eat elephant's hide? Hide, hoof, and tusk. Oh. I thought they made piano keys out of the tusks. Well, you see, we had no pianos in the jungle, so we boiled the tusks for dinner. The aroma gathered the animals from miles around. You could hear them in the jungle. Oh! You know, this is the first time I've had my family all together in our home. Oh, I think it's wonderful. just got out some old, some old photographs of Victor. I want you to look at them. This one was taken when he was six years old. And this... John, why did you marry me? What? Why did you marry me? Why, I... Are you joking? No, I'm asking you because I want to know. Why did you marry me? Why, I... Why wouldn't anyone marry you? Oh, it would have meant so much if you said something else. Julie. Julie. Julie, dear. Julie. You're more tired than you think. Let's not talk any more about it tonight.
you conceited fool. Why did you marry her? When you couldn't tell her. Hmm. That's the easiest thing to answer. Well, we've been associated together now for, for a good many years. There are times when we all lost a little sleep over one deal or another. But what was sleep or anything compared to building up a great fortune? Ah. <laughs> That's what I used to think. Huh? I've been one man who always said he'd never retire. Well, I still say it. In fact, I'm just ready to go to work. But the job I've picked for myself is a little different. I want to get out from under all this strain. Why don't you take up golf, J.W.? Gosh, I'm not old enough for that, Ed. <laughs> I want to play hooky. And then I have someone to take my place with you men. Someone who'll keep the name of Whitcomb alive. I mean my son, Victor. Well, that's great for you. But, but how about us? I remember distinctly a few years ago, a certain man who was near bankruptcy. Yes, and suicide. That man came to me, and I had faith in him. I went on his notes. My associates thought I was crazy, but he came through. No. Well, uh, good heavens, old man. I didn't mean to. Uh, to uh, Why, of course you didn't. I, I knew I could count on you. In fact, I thought I could count on all of you. Put your shoulders back of the boy and help him to the top where I want him. Yeah, well, sure. well, that's fine. Say, I'll bet there are a lot of things you fellows want to say about me, and I've got a most important... The cable just arrived for you, sir. Oh. A most... Cable will reply and tell him to offer 5,000 more. Yes, sir. Trying to buy the finest little villa on the Riviera. Just a little place at Beaulieu, but it has the sweetest strip of the Mediterranean right at the front door. Not thinking of living abroad, John. No definite plans of any kind yet, Ed. But you can bet your life this little villa will be very much in my plans when they are made. <laughs> mm? <laughs> Gosh, I gotta go. Standing, talking to a lot of fellas. Oh. If I didn't know John Whitcomb as well as I do, I'd say there was a woman back of all this. Well, I suppose we'll read all about it in the morning tabloids. All right, dear, come on, let's hurry. I have to get back to the office. out if it was the music or me. How can you say that? Because I can't understand, Julie. You keep making excuses to keep away from the house, from dinner, any place that I might be. Why? When you love me. But can't you understand? I want to be a little, a little decent to him. That is the least I can do, Victor. Yeah, but are we to go on like criminals? Whispering in corners, stealing glances? Oh, it, it's unbearable, you. Oh, you should have let me go away. Back to Europe or any place. And I'd have followed you on the next boat. You know that. Well, but you would have forgotten. And me? Well, at least I would have done one thing. Thing by giving you back to him. But surely, nothing else matters. I love you. Oh, 
no. No, Victor. I must go. No, no, please. Please don't go. I, no. I promise. I I'll just sit and look at you. It'll be all right, won't it? That is the last time for such madness. I'm going. Julie. Alone. I'm so sorry, but Madame's not here. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, she'll be so disappointed. I'll wait. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. Will you come in the office? Thank you. Long? No time at all, dear. Oh, I'm glad, Don. I suppose you've been slaving to make some old fuss budget look like a duchess. Oh, no. I went to lunch. Lunch? Yes. You? With Victor. Vic? John, I have to... Now you see. I hesitate to break in on your sacred business hours. While he, the young scamp... Well, let him try it again. Julie, now I know it can be done. I'm going to keep you so busy, you won't have time to lunch with anyone but me. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from that boy. <laughs> oh, about tonight. Now, I insist on your being there. These people who are coming, it's the first time that many of them have been in our home since we were married. They all knew Victor as a boy, I know, John, I know, I... I know. They all know you as Madame Julie. But I want them to know you, dear, as Mrs. Whitcomb. But Doris, she... Oh! Boop, boop, a do. Now, promise. Do as I ask. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> 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 Just to know you're close to me, my. Even when clouds fill the sky, what can I when I know you're a close Just a little word from you, chances of shadows to Love. Who 
it around so long it's almost worn out and anyway it's run out now i'll have to get a new one well get a new one you may have a chance to use it gee you've accepted me oh wait a minute aren't you supposed to give me a kiss oh, sorry. <laughs> oh for... she comes i leave you alone no 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 please please don't go Victor, darling, yes. I can remember when your dear mother danced in this very room, and you and Doris and Helen were little children. Isn't she sweet tonight? Oh, mother, please. Yes, she's lovely. Victor, do dance with her just as you used to. Dance with her, please. May I? I'd love to. What 
What a charming pair. Don't they look well together? Ellen is so pretty. She dances beautifully. Victor was so fond of her when they were only children. It was always dear Anne Whitcomb's wish that they would marry. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm sure I can count on your help to carry out the wishes of Victor's mother. Marriage is so serious. Well. It's Doris. Doris, what's wrong? Oh, I've been trying for ages to get her to marry me. Doesn't she love you? That's just what I don't know. Oh, I could go out and fuss myself. I'm crazy about her, and she treats me like a phonograph record. Put on, take off, put on. Poor boy. Gee, you understand, don't you? You know how it feels to feel... Well, you know how it feels. <laughs> you are a nice boy, buddy. Sweet boy, you must be happy. Oh, What's God. the matter with that young elephant? Toothache? Me? Uh, I'm all right. How did you get here? Well, Doris invited me. Go away. I'm in such a good humor tonight that everything seems all right, even you. Go away. Yes, sir. Ha. Darling. What? Come with me to the foot of the stairs. It's getting late. He's here, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Malcolm. How are you? Congratulations. Just heard the news. Did you really? Right. Oh, happy. Down, nice down. to see you here. I must hurry and change. I'm leaving at once for Washington. You are going now? I must be there at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. John, what is so important? I... I can't tell you now. Be patient for just a little while. I'll see you again before I go. I'm going to put the cards on the table. I'm going to tell him we love each other. Are you mad? It's better for me to tell him than someone else. What do you mean? Be very careful what you say in front of Dawn. And why? Well, I'm not sure how much she knows, but... Please, oh, please, don't. Can't you wait? No, Dawn. I've got to see you. Victor! Serious face? What's on your mind? Dad. I can't go on like this any longer. Oh, of course you can't. I've been expecting this ever since your return. I know that a fine, active young man like you couldn't be expected to idle about. But don't worry. Matters are being arranged to take care of that. What do you mean? Well, I didn't mean to tell you until my return from Washington. But, Victor, I'm arranging to turn over all my business interests to you. That'll put you in a position second to no young man of your age in New York. Yeah, but, Dad, that's not oh, what I meant. don't try to be modest now. Say nothing to anyone about it yet. Julie doesn't know. I'm arranging everything as a surprise for her. Oh, but Dad... Oh, I'll... come on, come on. Quick. I've got to catch this dress. Oh, hello, darling. Well, I'm off. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Victor.
Did you tell him? No. I couldn't get to him. He kept talking about other things. Oh, Dieu merci. Is the coffee and toast you prepared for her? Yes, sir. I'll take it to her, sir. No, you won't. I'll take it in myself. You seem to annoy her. I'm sorry, sir. Yes, you annoy a great many people round about here. Yes, sir. You'll have to be a great deal smarter. Yes. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Pardon me, Miss Doris, but uh, was anything wrong with breakfast this morning? I don't know. I noticed you hadn't eaten anything, so I... I brought you in some coffee. Well, I don't want any coffee. Oh, dear, dear, dear. No one seems to want anything this morning. Mr. Victor went out very early. Oh, was anyone with him? Uh, no. No one was with him. Uh, Madam went directly from her room to the car and left for church. Martin, hmm? did the telegram arrive this morning? No, Miss Doris. Are you expecting your father today? I don't know. Could you tell me how many there will be for lunch? Well, it doesn't matter. I won't be here anyway. I can't stay in this house any longer. But, Miss Doris. Oh, if you can't see, if you don't know what's going on here. Oh, Mel, I've written it all in this letter. You give it to my father personally the moment he returns. Leave me when he reads that. Well, it may open his eyes. Barton. Has Mr. Whitcomb returned? Not yet, madam. I should think my father would be the last person you'd want to see. And why? After what's been going on in this house since he went away, I can well imagine what happened on the Ile de France. Oh, I should think you'd never want to look anyone in the face again. Doris, what you think is a lie. Mm, you talk about lying. Who were you before you married? Your father knew well enough who I was before he married me. Mm. You wanted his money. That's what you wanted. No. I have my business. I am independent of your father, and I always will be. Well, I suppose you can pull the wool over his eyes, but you can't pull it over his eyes. You listen to me until I'm through. You see this? My wedding ring. Your father gave it to me. And if well, I was want... Is that all you have to say to me? Dory, oh, get please. out of my way. Listen. Doris, don't. Oh, that's all right. I'll wait right. Oh, hello, Doris. Buddy, have you got your car? Yes, but gee, I didn't expect it to decide so suddenly. Well, I want to get out of this house. If I leave my own home, my father may wake up to what's going on here. Oh, well, what's going on? Oh, you don't have to know. All you have to do is to take me away. Oh, gosh. Oh, well, hurry, buddy. Oh, well, Doris. Oh, please don't talk to me. Oh. I'll wait for you in the car. Oh, let go. I wish you'd never come back. I wish I were dead. Now, just a minute, honey. Now, come on. Come on, tell me. What's the trouble? Oh, you know what the trouble is. I can't stay here any longer after what's been going on between you and Julie. Stop it! One thing is true. I do love Julie. 
I've tried to tell Potter. But what you insinuate, Doris, is not true. And you can thank Julie for that. For if she listened to me... I don't believe you. You lied to me once and you lied again to protect her. Oh, I never want to see you or anybody in this house as long as I live. Doris. Or oh, Dee. Julie, I've just returned from the East River. There's a small mail steamer sailing at 12 sharp this noon. Oh, what a relief. Almost a year at sea with, with no one to bother. Victor, you are going? Yes, and you're going with me. I've booked our passage. But your father... Julie, I love you. He couldn't even understand. It's useless to try to explain to them. And besides, Julie, it's up to you to decide whether you're going or not. Oh, it's settled. Huh? Oh, darling. But, but my luggage is already on the way to the boat. Now, you hurry. Hurry and pass, Julie. Run away again, Victor. Oh, but I couldn't stay another minute in this house. And besides, I was sure you'd come with me. I'll go. Oh, good, good. Now, darling, the boat is the Segundo. East River, foot of 20th Street. Segundo, 20th Street. Right, yes. yes. Now, remember. What? But Doris and Bertie, now you and I... Oh, but darling, come, come, hurry. Oh, you'll be lonely. Yes, but we can't help that. Oh, no. I go, Victor. Oh, oh But you go first, will you? What? I want to leave some words for him. And you see, I'm sure Boston suspects it's better you go. I will follow in a taxi. Go, please. All right, very well. But, darling, remember now. You can't be late. Twelve sharp, noon. And when we get on that boat, we'll have the first real happiness we've ever known. Oh, darling. No, no, no. Not in this house. No. Right. Now, quickly. Victor. Barton. Big pardon, madam. But has Mr. Whitcomb returned? I thought I heard his voice. No, that was Mr. Victor's voice. Yes, madam. All right. But I... Uh, please, I... I will attend to it. Yes, madam. Could you tell me how many there will be for lunch? Oh, I don't know. Oh, please, will you send me Jeanette to my room right away, Pa? Yes, ma'am. Jeanette! Jeanette! Oui, madame. Hurry. Pack your things for traveling. I'm going away. No evening gown. I'm going away in a little trip. Another trip, yes. Oh, madame, I know all about it. I have everything ready for it. Voila, madame. The four new traveling suits for your little trip. Who said that? Oh, Mr. Whitcomb. Mr. Whitcomb? A little trip. Well, that was a wild ride. <laughs> What's the matter with Jerry this morning? Oh, Barton, uh, that, uh, that beacon case. Get it and bring it in, will you? I have something special in it. I hope you had a successful trip, sir. Oh, I did indeed, I did indeed. Uh, excuse me, sir, but could you tell me how many there'll be for lunch? Lunch? I know, I know. Ask Mrs. Whitcomb. Oh, I'll be closing the house in Barton. What, sir? Suppose you'd like to live abroad after a couple of months' vacation. Hmm? Well, sir, I don't know. You don't know? Perhaps I might. Perhaps you might. Well, think it over. Think it over. Julie. Julie. Come here. I didn't telegraph. I wanted to surprise you. Oh, darling. Oh, it's so good to be home. 
I've so much to tell you. I don't know where to begin. You know, darling, I... I never realized how empty a home would be without you. But we won't be here much longer. I've something for you. See, dear. Look at this. Purchased villa at Beaulieu. For you. Stop. Deal being completed this week. Stop. John. Ah, honeymoon villa. It's yours now. Not rented. Bought and paid for. Yours. And next, the little trip we talked about so often. What do you say to this? I've resigned. Got rid of my committees in Washington and all my responsibilities here. There's an example for you, Julie. Now, will you forget that shop of yours? Give it to Mrs. Black. Sell it if you like. And go holidaying with me. Round the world. Then, bore you to live with your Paris near at hand. Oh, Julie. I've just found out how much I... Well, ever since you asked me that question, why did I marry you? I should have told you then. It's because I... Because I love you. I want you more than anything in the world. I... I... Oh, oh, I'll have to stop this raving. No, no, John, go on, oh, please. I, go. I, I just need you close to me. Oh. oh, but what of your children? Doris will soon marry. She has gone with Buddy. Well, I'm not surprised. I expected it. And Victor. That's gone. Victor. I had plans for him, but things will go on. So you see, Julie, I'm alone. There's only you, after all. You may not want even me. Hmm? After you read this. What is left for you? Read it now. Do you know what's in it? I can guess. You may not want even me after you read it. I can just see that little strip of the Mediterranean in front of the villa. You and me. Oh, Julie. Julie. Nothing. Nothing could ever stop that. <laughs> oh, John. Oh. Madam, but could you tell me how many there'd be for lunch? Two bottles. Say, 